This week, we reveal the ultimate One Day Leader Season 5 winner. It's certainly been an incredible 13 weeks for me, as much as I'm sure that it's been a great one for you watching at home. Now, seeing these six young hopefuls battling it out week in and week out to get their points across on how we as a country can rise above some of our major socio-economic issues and, of course, restore confidence in proactive leadership. Well, here we are today about to crown the ultimate winner of One Day Leader Season 5. Pearl Wagashonge, including Namugele Oshelen Luetu. Namsanje, Sisema Petaloni, got up before I go even further. Let me take you through the amazing journey we've had. Take a look at this. From the streets of Rwanda, from the streets of Umlaz, a leader's vision for social justice through education emerges. I imagine a South Africa of radical economic transformation. Today, we live in a political revolution where young people are at the forefront. We can work hand in hand at developing South Africa to become the utopia it rightfully is. If we can change our mindsets, we can change our lives. It all began four months ago when 20 young hopefuls came to Johannesburg. They were all inspired and inspiring, but they could only be six. Anike applied to come back for the fifth season. Um, it was because in the previous season I finished third. Um, and, and I actually wanted to test myself for it. If I give it a try again, how far will I get this time? My journey with One Day Leader started in 2014 when I auditioned for season three. Um, I was sort of successful because I did make it to the top 20, but then I auditioned again for season four, again made it to the top 20, but obviously then also didn't make it to the top six. So I was just like, you know what, um, three times is probably a charm, so I did it again this season and of course I'm here. Thank you very much. Judges, you have now made your final selections. My thoughts and feelings upon becoming or hearing that I'm part of the top six I was ecstatic. I think I was extremely excited, especially because here at for the auditions uh, top 20. There was so much competition. There was, it was a lot of pressure. There were a lot of amazing people. I'm grateful for the journey. I must say that I'm grateful for the people that I was able to inspire, especially my age group. When you on the outside looking at getting inside, you just look at it as if. I wouldn't say simple, but you're up for the challenge. Uh, but once you're inside, you realize the intensity of everything. It's not just about cameras following you. It's not just about um, you being on TV each and every week. It's not just about studio debate, um, but rather the tasks that we actually do. If the reality of you being in the One Day Leader Season 5 Top 6 has not sunk in yet, I suggest you adjust, and very quickly. Today I will be handing you your first task. When we were doing the task, yeah, yeah the, the, the girl from, from the school in Alexandra, um, she was caught in between a very difficult place, between concentrating on her schoolwork and following her passion, being soccer. And I could, I could immediately resonate with, at that moment, at that point in time, I could resonate with exactly what she was going through. I wouldn't call it my favorite task, but definitely the task I connected with the most was the Nyawupe task, where we had to go interview Umbali. Um, I can remember obviously relating from like having a childhood friend was, that was in the same situation. I think my favorite task was probably, yeah, unemployment by Tim Billy, because that was, it was real, it, it was, it was, it, I'm not saying any other tasks were not real, but that was, it was really at the core of, I had never seen anything like that. Remember, you will have 30 seconds for your opening statement, 60 seconds to challenge each other, and then the remaining 30 seconds to conclude. 
if we are going to roll out a pilot project in Gauteng, we need to also roll it out in all these when other different provinces. When you roll out a pilot pro uh, project, you're trying to see if it will work, Sidney. You are trying to it's see if it's going to It's not something that is already in systematically working, Sidney. You need to see if it's working. So once you s sort of start somewhere, I mean, you start somewhere, Sidney. You see don't see just take something and spread it across, and spread it across the Republic. not in the beginning, not, not as a pilot system. My biggest highlight has to be there's a period where over a period of four weeks, I was losing debates back to back. And I was sitting, I think, with the lowest points um, compared to everyone else um, as, as a returning contestant. And just in two weeks, in three debates, I was able to, to revive all of my points and still manage to proceed through to, to finals. The minute you violate your morals, beliefs and ethics, you are corrupt. The issue in our society is lack of accountability and no ethic. If we can develop a high ethical and accountability culture, we'll develop a high level of trust in other people as well as in our system as a whole. This trust will strengthen our support and our sort of strength within our whole integrity system. And it begins with each and every one of us. We are not victims. We need to allow the process to happen. The weighing out between the strengths of um, Labour in Sydney, um, uh, Sydney, his leadership is, is it's, it's exceptional. I mean, he's debating, like, it just speaks for its, uh, itself. Since I'm out, I'm definitely with Team Nero. I, <laughs> I genuinely, like, I don't know. I really don't know what, who's going to win. I really don't know. I'm quite um, excited to be in studio and to watch that go down. It's going to be very exciting. And what a journey it's been for our six contestants, with all of them coming from different walks of life. They were taken out of their comfort zones to carry the brunt of true leadership, coming face to face with the very people they were leading. South Africa, we now stand right here with the cream of the crop, who are ripe and ready to be leaders in their own right. Leaders, for the last time this season, your vision statements, please. You and I can work hand in hand at developing South Africa to become the utopia it rightfully is where we drive regional and economic development by empowering our young people. I am talking about a South Africa of tomorrow, today. Thank you. For the last time labor this season. South Africa deserves a strong world woman to drive economic development and to serve society with due diligence. If we can change our mindsets, we can change our lives. Well, thank you very much, leaders. Well, our leaders were not alone on this journey. Ukuze bafige labe kona namhlanje akhe ngikhombi se abantu abadlale indima enkulu ohambe labo. Our resident judges, founder and CEO of Ditsego Media, Debo Khot Ditsego, and climate activist and social entrepreneur Catherine Constantinides. Welcome back, judges. <laughs> We welcome the Deputy Minister of Social Development, Mama Henrietta Bokopane Zulu, all protocol observed. <laughs> the Strategic Relationship Manager from Brand South Africa, Ms. Tony Kumete. <laughs> and last but not least, the CEO of the NYDA, who is our main sponsor, Mr. Katura Mukumba. Welcome. <laughs> We'd like to thank you all for playing such an integral part in the growth of all our six contestants. If it wasn't for your time, your dedication, your mentorship, as well as your resources, I don't think they'd be where they are today. So thank you. Now remember you at home can post your comments on our Facebook page, that's One Day Leader SA. Also visit our Twitter page at One Day Leader and of course that all important finale hashtag One Day Leader 5. We will post them live on the show. Nika Kotlage to vote for your favorite leader with the word leader and their number to our SMS line which is 32672. When we return we take a look at more of what our leaders have achieved.
Welcome back to One Day Leader, the season finale of season five, where you've witnessed how we as a show have taken young people from all four corners, Alani Mzanzi, and groomed them to becoming pioneers of change in our country. We will be crowning the ultimate winner, who will be walking away with 300,000 rand of the grand prize, and of course, the title of being the ultimate One Day Leader. Now, I'll bring Katu in. Why was it so important as the NYDA to form a partnership with us as One Day Leader? Look, for us, uh, we have the responsibility as given by the government of South Africa to ensure that there's integrated youth development in our country. But for us, a show like this, uh, uh, it's very important, especially given the times that we are in as a country, where there are doubts about the future of the country, the leadership of the country, when we are able to assist in the process of an ethnic talent such as this, it tells us that indeed the future is bright, indeed there is hope. So we are very proud to be associated with One Day Leader and we are more proud of the young people who have participated in this program over the last uh, couple of years and we are very happy with the two candidates who are still standing. Thank you very much. Let me bring you in. I mean, you've spent the past 13 weeks mentoring yeah. our leaders, looking at their growth. What would you say are some of the qualities from both these leaders that have personally inspired you? Yeah, Pearl. Well, I'll start with Sydney Madibo. I think your competitiveness is what drives you to keep getting better. And um, what I like about your competitiveness is that you realize that you're not just competing with the contestants, but you're also competing against yourself. And that is why you've been involved in some of the most electrifying debates on the show. Now, going to Ms. Lebon Pella, one thing that we love about you is your calm confidence. You don't need to stand on top of a roof and scream your lungs out. Um, you're comfortable in your own skin. And that is why you are a part of some of the most mature debates on One Day Leader. And I'm quite certain that we could take you tomorrow into a boardroom and you will make great impact in any institution in the country, continent, or anywhere in the world. So powerful. And now I'll go to one of our other contestants, Ritabile. You were in the top three. Quickly take us through the journey of uh, this show. Um, this show is actually amazing. Um, I can't take away how it actually grew me to be this confident leader that I never thought I'd ever be. Um, also, seeing the challenges and only debating with the matrix typical people that have degrees was very challenging <laughs> as well. But it was something that I'll, I'll always cherish and I'll always be proud of myself for. So, um, looking. I'm proud of myself for inspiring young people as well, and also I'm, I'm thankful for the support I've, I've got throughout the show. It's, been, it's an amazing platform, definitely. Fantastic. <laughs> well, Babu Gelibe, to your guess is as good as mine as to who will be walking away with that final title. Got the one thing I'm sure of is that all six leaders are certainly not the same people they were when they first walked into our show and they all stood behind those podiums. They've all grown in their own right. Now, take a look at some of the achievements they've accomplished even outside of the show. Trust me, you'll be inspired. Uh, the NYDA, um, because in the episode that we had with her, when we were finding out her situation, they seemed very keen to assist. And we thought, hey, let's try them out and see if maybe it's an option that she can use to, to maybe move, move ahead in life. Uh, and because we, work, we worked with the NYDA before, we should come and find out her. What sort of opportunities can you present to us? NYDA uh, provides two products to young people. It's skills development and then business development support. We run awareness, we run um, enterprise development now at a higher level. So awareness is for all of us. Uh, they say about 10, 20% of us are going to be entrepreneurs. So we do it for all of us and those that would like to become entrepreneurs then proceed and do the high level skill. So that we can do. We can organize that for that to happen and wherever she is, we have uh, youth advisory centers with, uh, in cooperation with municipalities. So wherever, wherever the closest one where she is, she can then start participating into those programs. They run them as group. And actually we can connect her with a, a services coordinator who can then uh, see which product is going to start soon and which one can she be slotted into so that she can start with some of the work. 
Juana, Juana she, she's, she's having an interview with one of the, the, the service coordinators and they are explaining to her all the different options that are at her disposal. Anytime. I'm happy that this happened um, because she might just grab the opportunity and make the most of it. And four of the One Day Leaders also got the opportunity to address the 2017 Tomorrow's Leaders Convention at Empress Palace, Kempton Park. The convention saw more than 900 people coming to learn and be inspired by the One Day Leaders and other young people who've made remarkable strides in various sectors. We're now in the fifth season of One Day Leader, and as you've seen, our contestants went on to do amazing things as leaders in their own spheres. Catherine, now let me bring you in here. Seeing these leaders achieve some of the amazing things that they've achieved, how do you feel about that and your contribution that you've made? I'm so inspired by the young leaders that we've had the opportunity to engage for the past 13 weeks. Not only have I seen them grow in front of our eyes each and every week, but I have seen how they've taken what they've learned and they've developed, they've evolved. And these are young leaders that will continue to make a great contribution to our society. There is no doubt that South Africa is well led. Mm. Well led indeed. Now each year, even in our previous seasons, our contestants have gone on to do some amazing things to positively affect our society. Now one of those is our Legacy Project. Of course, it's an initiative where our contestants actively do something to leave a lasting legacy in the lives of the community they've worked closely with. This year, our leaders did just that by choosing the community of Alexandra to be a part of their Legacy Project. I guess we to come to the journey. Today, our legacy project, more to Seoul Youth Centre, uh, which is basically us as a one day leader team coming together and doing something in what we know will, will cause an impact in a community and will leave sort of our legacy in that community itself. We're going to give back to the community as leaders and it's going to be really fantastic because we saw everybody's happy to be together again and do what we came here to do as leaders. The Tucson Youth Center started in 1979 as a community development facility where young people are empowered to steer their lives down a path of their choosing. Um, we chose Tucson Kahore. We once came here for our education um, topic and we were touched at how, you know, in a community you'll find a center that is so um, for youth development and skills and so on. So for us, we wanted to sort of see how we can um, help them with regards to improving the centre, any facilities they have. We want to ensure that this place um, is basically renovated mm. and functions efficiently and mm. we maximise the facilities. Mm. <laughs> Two of our, of our judges from previous episodes. Um, we wanted to see the um, paint for us to paint inside the, the study room and the counseling room. And then Oma Munatilele, an author, and they brought us a bag filled with, with inspirational books for, for people who visit the center or Badibale. The One Day Leaders also invited artists from Ambitious Records to come and help, and they all heeded the call. Down with the guys, we decided to split ourselves into two teams, one that would tackle the food and one that would tackle the painting. I nominated myself for painting definitely because it's something that I'm familiar with.
One Day Leader alumni Anelim Zimande also came to lend a helping hand. Yeah, so we're doing hot dogs, yeah? And this is the tea. This is the tea. Yes. Hi, I'm good. Wow, this is Lebu. Lebu. And as Ritabile and her team were preparing the hot dogs, inside, Sakile was teaching everybody how to paint. I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning until Sakile came and he showed me the, the ropes. I'm generally in the office um, as an architectural intern, speccing what people should paint on walls. And now I'm out here doing it, so it's pretty, it's pretty awesome on that front. But just also knowing that this is a counselling room that's here to basically help people when they're like not feeling too well in terms of like their issues and stuff. To just make it look vibrant and make it look like a, a very welcoming space is really, really cool. I'm enjoying being a part of that, knowing that when we leave here, it's going to make a positive impact in someone's life. So yeah, man, yo. I mean, it was dope. No, but I think it was very dope what you guys are doing. Man. And they asked me to be part of this thing. Yeah. They actually asked, so, yeah, would you guys like to do something like this? And I'm like, yeah. It's a really exciting feeling to know that I can stretch out my hand and help um, 60 odd kids. And I'm just so grateful that I was able to do it with my friends and the people that I work with on a, on a regular. So yeah, it's, it's a great feeling to help other people. The fun part came where um, the kids actually got involved, um, putting their hands on the wall. Um, so I guess that um, did mean something. And also the painting in itself, um, getting to know um, the artist that we're painting um, with, getting to know that he's not just about music, uh, but also giving back to the community, getting to know that he actually knows how to paint. I'm winning and you catching feelings. Young homie, I handle my business. Killer flow and add lyrical fitness. Y'all be hating, I'm glad that you witness. Pull up, pull up. Very often when we see artists performing, is on our television screens, we, we often forget or they are human. And Lebona, they also have to add a human element to the work that they do. So having them participate in, in us trying to rebuild the center um, is, is something the Batland to the Tusong Center are going to remember for a very long time. For real. This means our Tusong Center is not useless. Means if, if MT can come through, if Ms. Pru can come through, if um, Saudi can come through, then it means that there is something actually happening at the center. Yuzanti, when we return, our two finalists go head to head in their final debate. I just got word that we are trending at number two this afternoon by using that all important hashtag one day leader five let's push it up to number one right where we will be announcing the winner for the season. Now, as a show, we've impacted the lives of many young South Africans who tune in every week without fail to follow the journey of our leaders. Now, recently, we went to East London to meet our number one fan, and this is what she had to say. I'm Nisha Vergisa, humanitarian blogger, blogger, and newbie adventurer. I love watching One Day Leader because it inspires the whole of South Africa to become active citizens in their own community. Everybody should watch One Day Leader because it's inspiring and motivating to the whole country. My message to this year's winner is an imperfect action is better than a, a thousand good ideas not executed. Well done to all involved in the making of this show. It has inspired me and made a difference in my life. 
Thank you so much to everyone, including the judges and the con and the contestants. Thank you so much, everyone. And that is one of many friends of the show, One Day Leader. Minister, let me come to you. It would be a lady like that, that the social development department would be reaching out to. What has this show, or how has this show impacted some of the work initiated by your department? I think it's very important for us to understand that young people are actually the uh, highest percentage in South Africa. And the success and the failure of South Africa really depends on how they behave today. Because if they don't bring their best, then we don't have a country to look forward to. Hmm. So every time they contribute in their own communities and understanding that it is important to make your own space. Before you go and make other people's spaces, you need to make your own space work. Then that is what this show, I think, taught a lot of them. That you matter no matter where you come from, no matter how different you are. And the gift that you came to this world with is not only about your career, paying the bills, and then, you know, live and die. It's about the gift that you need to employ to society so you rob your grave and not take anything back. And I think that's what this show assists our young leaders to understand that they are the future of this country and this country belongs to them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. Now we still need one more solution from our top two. Now the country is talking about radical economic transformation. Gabby says, good to Lento. I want you guys to present a very strong argument on this issue. You guys know the rules by now. You've done this many times before. So, Leader 4, your 30 seconds starts now. During our democracy, we have developed policies on economic growth that do not speak to the disparities in our economy. Far more than just developing one policy after the other, we need to start speaking implementation. Burkina Faso in Libya, with post-independence understood that political freedom without owning the means of production would lead to a deteriorating state even though it is democratic. Without land, there can be no infrastructure. Without wealth, there can be no provision of services. We need to nationalize before we can speak on policy implementation. All right. Excuse me, I hear everything that you're saying, but I was waiting to hear what sort of effective thing can be done regarding to the Ma question, what effective Nationalization is the most effective policy that I've put to you. Burkina Faso in 1983, during the reign of General Thomas Sankara, nationalized all the mines. How and within we, a space of four years, they were able to reach... Before we nationalize any mines, would the core of everything should be education. The, because the, the, the minute you try to take education forms part of, of means of production. Try, there is no way that you can You're get people... You're giving me a statement. Head. What is your question? What my question is, what is the most effective way that we can not only have Ladies what we need... Ladies and gentlemen, need, the most effective oh. way to drive radical economic transformation is by be. dealing with the economy. In How do we deal with the economy? Lebo, in, 19, in 1993, when the Transitional Executive Committee signed over a, an $850 million loan from the International Monetary Fund, it was not cognizant of the Freedom Charter. It Sydney, was not cognizant Right now we're speaking well. about the current issues we're having you right want to now. Speak about Unemployment, on poverty, which land are we inequality. Going to build school? How are we going to? Yes, we have the land. You we're want to speak employment? It. How do, many people do, are going do, to be employed do, do if we you have don't have wealth? Do we have enough skills? All right. <laughs> Let's see what their contestants. Your remaining 30 seconds start now. Let us transform the economy cognizant of the Freedom Charter, remembering that the people of Sharpville deserve to be at the same level of development as the people of Houghton, remembering that our freedom is inadequate if we do not own our banks, if we do not own our mines, and if we do not occupy our land. Remembering that higher education remains a dream if I am proving to a magistrate on Wednesday why I am too poor to study in an institution of higher learning. If General Thomas Sankara could nationalize for the purpose of developing his people, Thank you very much. So Time is we. up. The fundamental basis of economic transformation in our country is the emancipation of previously marginalized South Africans. We have three factors here, unemployment, inequality, and poverty. How do we effectively combat this? Number one, educational transformation. We need to provide a wider skills development pool within schools and within the community. Number two, entrepreneurship. We need a, a more wide entrepreneurial ecosystem that provides incubators, access to funding, more for our entrepreneurs. We need more skills. We need to give people agricultural Thank skills. Thank you very much, Lebo. Time is up. 
You have 60 seconds. I'm hoping you'll give me an opportunity to ask you this question in full. Nebu, you're speaking about us investing more in education and entrepreneurship. But how do we do that when we do not dictate what the curriculum is going to look like? How do we do that if we cannot dictate whether or not we own the Sydney, banks or not? This is we a do time not own where the means of we production. We need to be able to say we come into a school governing body. Can we have people serving on here but who the are coming with skill sets? Does not Business control people. the economy but of the, the country. What I'm saying to you is, unless you can educate people, you're doing that. Ma'am, there is no the economic transformation without educational transformation. You need to know what you're going to do with what you've been given. You need with to learn. With the current to... education I'm getting now, what form of sustainable employment am I going to get? You tell me. You, 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 you've had opportunities within you're your, the one your speaking life about span. Educational transformation. Yes, I'm speaking about from any level within communities, within the schools, entrepreneurial skills. With you're still not any addressing kind of the fact that, that South Africa is sitting with a Gini coefficient of 0.5 because it is unequal. There is ripe inequality Sydney, in the country. What we need is to let people know what they can do, how they can move their lives. And then the right time is up. Thank you very much. A successful economic development strategy must focus on improving the skills of the area's workforce and making available the resources businesses need in order to compete and thrive in the economy. What we need to focus on here is preparation of the mindset, education, skills development and entrepreneurship. Let's equip people with sustainable knowledge. Let's teach them what's the value of money. How can one create wealth? How do you move from being a street vendor to owning a franchise? True economic transformation is investing in human capital. With the right skills, education and mindset. Thank you very Everyone much, Lebo. Right and that was a feisty final debate coming through there. Debo, let me come to you, your comments on this debate. First of all, that was the best debate we've seen the whole season. <laughs> you, both of you have performed exceptionally well. Um, Sydney, as is usual, you came and you bettered what you did last week. You compete with yourself before you compete with the contestants. And I think that the owning the means of production is very critical. A and, and you hit the nail on the head right there. And Lebu, I'm very impressed with how you kept pressing him on education. Because once you have the means of production, you need to have the skills in order to make it productive. And so you also need a plan, and that is what I was missing from both of you. What is the plan? in order for us to pursue radical economic transformation. But well done to both of you. Thank you very much, Deboho. Now let me take the discussion to Sakile. You've been on that podium before. You yeah. know the heat. What solution would you have brought to the podium today? I think um, Deboho is correct like in terms of maybe trying to delve into what a suitable or applicable plan would be once you own the means to production, right? So I would have probably taken it um, closer to what was said, post-owning things, what do you then tangibly do to make it work for the people around? And yeah, I, I think I'm drawn to a solution that says you educate people, you make them realize their potential and what they can do so that they can then, with what they have, build on and create a better society. All right, thank you very much, Sakile. Well, your vote at home might just be the decider. Ngakoge, remember to vote on our SMS line. It is that each and every president or, or leader give a speech that will convince or influence people out there to believe in them. Well, Tony, let me come to you as Brand South Africa. What kind of a, what makes a good leader, actually? Okay, well, I believe this country, um, we are looking for a future, future leaders who, have, who can inspire others to be able to change their mindset to, uh, I can, I too can, being able to impact the space from yourself. Um, and I think another important one is to be able to um, be inspired by a leader who believes and has so much passion for this nation brand that you can't, you can't help but catch that fire mm -hmm. and want to see a better and better South Africa as well. Very well said. <laughs> All right, now before I go back to our leaders, Mzanti, we are now officially trending at number one. Thank you very much for all your tweets.
Now, leaders, it is time for you to tell us why South Africa should be voting for you. How are you going to be taking this country forward? Why should you get the title of being the ultimate one-day leader? Leader 4, I'll start with you. Look, I took off my glasses now. <laughs> I believe that apart from just voting for leader 4 to become this season's one-day leader, we should take this journey of one-day leader as testimony of how you can continue falling, you can continue failing, you can continue getting down, but you always have to persevere. You always have to get back up. Each and every single one of us in the studio watching in our television screens need to remember that One Day Leader is far more than just a competition. From today, you might be voting for Leader 4. Tomorrow, you might be voting for the President of South Africa. In 10 years to come, you might be voting for a delegate of the African Union. So by supporting the Leader 4 campaign, you are doing far more than just supporting one person on one competition. You're supporting the dream of what South Africa can be. You're supporting of what, what we can be. You're supporting a belief that at all times reminds us that failure, poverty, unemployment, all of these social economic problems we have in our society do not contain us. We contain ourselves, and it is up to us to burst out of our bubble. It is up to us to develop our Thank community. Thank you, Sydney. <laughs> Lebo, you have 60 seconds. South Africa is listening. The fundamental characteristics that One Day Leader seeks to mine in an individual is how you engage in conversation, how you engage in critical thought, and how you connect with your audience. I have proven to be the better competitor under this criteria. I led the scoreboard for eight weeks, proving that I am a competent leader, but also a consistent one. Furthermore, I have inspired and want to continue inspiring every hustler, doer, and every thinker in South Africa through entrepreneurship. South Africa, a woman has never won one, one day leader. This is finally the time for a strong world woman to take the throne. Thank you. Catherine, are you convinced? Did they do enough? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, you know, we're sitting with two unbelievable leaders in front of us and whoever does take the title, you know, really deserves it. Either one of these young leaders could take it. And I have to reiterate what Tony said earlier. It is a great leader that inspires greatness in others. And these two young leaders, along with the four that have fallen over previous um, episodes, have certainly inspired greatness in others. And I think that this moment in time is a pinnacle point in both of your lives but it is what you do with the next chapter when you wake up tomorrow and you start the next chapter of your journey what will you do with this platform that was given to you Zanti, while the lines are now officially closed, as we go into the ad break, our studio audience will vote on whose speech moved them the most. And then later we find out who will be crowned the ultimate One Day Leader Season 5 winner. Come back with us. been an exciting journey for us all, one which is about to reach its culmination. There certainly is no going back now, and we are only a few minutes from announcing who our winner will be. Now, Anissa, very quickly, let me come to you. Who and why do you think will take this one? Wow, Pearl. Uh, I'm putting in a very tough uh, spot, but I'd like to say that I believe um, in both the leaders standing right there. And all I can say is may the best man or woman take this one. All right. <laughs> Well, now our second runner-up, Samzanti, who are Rutabile and Sakile, will be walking away with 20,000 rands each. And our first runner-up, which could either be Sydney or Lebo, will walk away with 150,000 rand each. And that is, of course, courtesy of the NYDA. Now, I do call on our auditor to bring forth the envelope. Actually, let me keep you in suspense, Mzanti. I want to talk to Jane, who is Lebo's mom. I mean, you've seen your daughter over the past couple of weeks battling it out, ultimately making it to the final two. How do you feel inside? <laughs> At a loss for words. What an emotional time. Mzanti, Jomani Bonela, Umagale, Wushulela, no Kulum. 
All right, uh, we're going to have to leave her with all that emotion. It really is quite moving. We haven't come this far, and I mean, Sydney's family as well is also in the audience uh, this afternoon, and I bet you they're feeling the exact same way. All right, before I go to the auditor to bring forth that envelope, I'll ask just the last word from our judges. Tebuk, I'll start with you. Well, as you guys go into society to make a difference, let's go to um, Because the next best idea may come from the least expected source. And I want you to build something that is bigger than yourself, um, that is meaningful, so that you can leave society better than how you found it. All right. Catherine. Absolutely. I reiterate so many of the comments already said, but it's about action not about position. Remember that as you continue your own leadership journey. Take that with you and go and inspire change where you come from. Inspire change so that others continue to be great when you move on to the next level. All right, and Katu, very briefly from you, your yeah, parting I mean, words. For me, I would just say to the two contestants that the real journey starts tomorrow beyond the glitz and the glamour of television. That's when you really prove your leadership skills and your worth to society. But from what you have been, you know, saying throughout the competition, we're hopeful that South Africa is in good hands. Thank you very much. To all our judges, round of applause, please. <laughs> all right. Rubbing my hands together, calling forth the auditor to bring that all-important envelope. We need to make this announcement as in part of. Thank you very much. Now, Mzansi, in this envelope, we have the judges' vote for the debate, the studio audience vote, and of course, your vote there at home. The winner, as voted for by the judges, and this is for the debate, mind you, Sydney. The audience has voted for Label. All right, Mzanti, this is the big one. The winner of season five. I'm going to have to call Katu. It's getting so hot, I can't do it. Let's assist you. And the winner walking away with 300,000 rand is Sydney. Congratulations to Sydney for being our ultimate one day leader, season five winner. And of course, to our first runner up, which is a label who walks away with the prize of 150,000 Rand. What an amazing season this has been. I'd like to thank our judges, our contestants, our guests, our studio audience, our sponsors, and of course, to you at home for making this season happen. South Africa, you have spoken, and you now have your next great leader. Sending us off is Ambitious Records, performing their track, Pumelela. From myself, Pearl Shongwe, Um Dimanzo, Bambo Lunyu, Makezong Ilbise, Mandateti, for the last time this season, and the rest of the One Day Leader team, it's goodbye from us.